This video will look at system software, in particular operating systems. So system software, what is it? Well, system software is software which will allow the computer to run and be maintained. Uh, and there's two types of software which come under the system software bracket. They are operating systems and utility software. So with the operating system, operating system, the most important piece of software on any computer. If you don't have an operating system, you won't be able to interact with the computer. No programs will be able to run. It's pretty useless. Uh, and the main reason is because an operating system is responsible for controlling and communicating with the computer hardware. It provides a platform on which any programs, any applications that we have can all work. So if you consider um, running an everyday program, uh, if you didn't have an operating system, then nothing would be displayed on the screen. Nothing could be, I don't know if it's a word processor, be sent to the printer. Um, if you were to play a game, nothing would be able to be controlled. Um, and the reason for this is because application software doesn't know how to talk to hardware devices. There are thousands of different types of hardware. And for us to write programs, applications, um, which have um, an ability to talk to all of those thousands and thousands of different possible devices that they could um, have to interact with, um, it wouldn't be very efficient. So instead, um, the operating system is uh, what takes responsibility to talk to all the different types of hardware. Uh, and the operating system can also talk to the application that's running as well. So when you print a document, the application talks to the operating system, which in turn talks to the printer. So in that way, the operating system sort of bridges the gap between hardware and the applications. So operating systems sit between the user's applications and the hardware, enables applications to use the hardware resource. And the, the heart of the operating system that allows us to do this, or allows an operating system to do it, is called the kernel. So it's at the heart of the operating system. It's responsible for looking after the most low level hardware operations. And it's the kernel that applications make use of when they want to operate the computer's hardware. So the operating system has ultimately got five major roles, which are memory management, peripheral management, multitasking, security, and providing an interface for the user. So let's look at each one in turn. So when it comes to memory management, the operating system manages the RAM. So remember that when you load up a program, when you double click on an icon on the desktop and a program opens, a copy of that application is put onto the RAM so that the CPU can start to uh, work with that program. And it's the operating system that copies the application onto the RAM. So in addition, the operating system will ensure that each program that loads has its own space on the RAM, um, and it basically prevents programs reading and writing onto the memory area of other applications. So they all have their own little compartment uh, or, or space on the RAM. And it's responsible for uh, managing virtual memory as well. So if the RAM gets full, it's the operating system that um, makes use of some secondary storage to act as RAM. It also manages the peripheral devices. So things like speakers or printers that are attached to computers. So um, the operating system controls them, it gives programs access to them. Uh, when you print a, a document, the program doesn't know how to talk to the printer, doesn't even know if one's installed, but the operating system does. So the word processor might send a message to the operating system, please can we print this, and then the operating system will go, yep, yeah, there's a printer that's attached, uh, I can talk to the printer and I'll send your file to the printer for printing. And it's the same when you save a file. The program passes the information to the operating system and the operating system uh, would then save a file onto the hard disk because it can talk to the hard disk, whereas a, an application cannot. So the operating system also provides a user interface. So the word interface means coming together and uh, a user interface is what allows a user to interact with a computer. And they'll often operate, uh, provide, sorry, operating systems will provide three major types of interface, a graphical user interface, a menu driven interface, and a command line interface. So when it comes to a graphical user interface, this is the sort that you would find on a Windows machine um, or a Mac, uh, uses icons, menus, pointers, and windows. Um, so that's an acronym WIMP uh, to control the computer. 
Uh, it's been around uh, for you know a good few decades now, mid 80s or so. And Windows and Macs are examples. A menu-driven interface. So this is where uh, menus are used to control a computer. Really uh, popular on um, cash machines in the high streets or on old mobile phones. Um, and the main reason is it just limit it, it limits the functionality. Uh, so you know you can't do anything unless it's on the menu, and that can be a good thing for a user in terms of the experience if it's a um, a, a device which you know only gives certain functionality. And then you've got the command line interface. So this um, is often, well, this used to be the only way to interact with a computer before we had graphical user in interfaces and many driven interfaces, still used by um, Linux users. Um, and you communicate with the computer by typing in written commands and it gives you full control over a computer. So multitasking. We know that a CPU can only process one instruction at a time. Uh, but an operating system enables multitasking by um, managing the processes that the CPU is given so that lots of programs can seemingly work all at the same time. So on a multitasking operating system, if you have several programs open, the operating system will give the CPU um, instructions from each program, maybe one at a time. Or perhaps it will see which program needs to get its work done first, but it will organise all the processes that need to be carried out and pass them onto the operate uh, onto the CPU um, in a particular order. And because the CPU works so quickly, if it's taking one instruction from each program in rapid succession, it appears that all programs are running simultaneously. Security. It does provide security as well, uh, not in the way that a um, an antivirus um, software would or a firewall, but it gives security in terms of allowing several users to each have their own accounts on a single computer. So operating systems manage these users and ensure that users' data is only seen by them and not by others. So the operating system provides security to users gives users usernames um, and gets them to choose a password so that data is kept within their own account. And you can also give different users different permissions. That's another benefit and, um, of an operating system in terms of the security that it, off it offers. So it means that one user may be given permission to install new programs, whereas others cannot. 